Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 8 CC Lesson 3 on Probability and Percent. Now throughout this unit, right, we've been discussing probability and the idea that probability measures the chance that something is going to happen. And one of the best ways to measure chance is by the use of percent. In fact, you see it all the time. Anybody who has ever watched a weather forecast will see something like, there is a 30% chance of rain tomorrow, right? Or there's a 100% chance of snow tomorrow, right? When you see that 100% chance of snow, you're psyched because you know you're gonna have the day off from school tomorrow, okay? So you probably already have a feeling for how percents get used in probability, but that's what we're gonna kind of devote today's lesson to. So let's get right into it. All right, as I mentioned, probability is the branch of math that tried, apparently it only tried, let's say tries to quantify how likely something is to happen. It tried and it failed. Um, percents can be useful in doing this, all right? So let's take a look at what we call the probability scale. Let's do this. Exercise number one. To rate the likelihood of an event, the probability scale goes from zero to one. Label each of the probability scales five sections with one of the following. HL, meaning highly likely. HU, meaning highly unlikely. SL, meaning somewhat likely. SU, meaning somewhat unlikely. And N, being neither likely nor unlikely. All right. So keep in mind, right, we've worked with probability for two lessons now, and probability is oftentimes phrased in terms of fractions, right? Because you, you look at the, the number of things that fall into your category divided by the total number of things and you get some kind of fraction. And we're gonna be doing that in a little bit, right? But all of those fractions lie between zero and one, with zero being indicating an event that is impossible and one indicating an event that is certain to happen. It absolutely will happen, right? All right, so, Let's take a look at this probability scale. We want to label each one of these things with one of those designations. Why don't you pause the video now and see if you can do them. All right, well, it's pretty simple. We can either start up here or we can start here. I'm gonna start here, right? So what would be the highly likely zone on our probability scale? Well, those would be probabilities way up here, probabilities that are close to one. So I'm gonna label this as being highly likely, right? On the other hand, our HU are highly unlikely. Those are gonna be probabilities that are close to zero or closer to zero. So we're gonna label down here highly unlikely. Now, SL, somewhat likely, those should be probabilities that are greater than a half, right? All right, so those are up here and similarly, somewhat unlikely will be down here. Now, events that are neither likely nor unlikely are events that have probabilities that are near one half, okay? Now, these are just sort of like categories, right? And I'm not going to give you an exact breakdown, right? What gets a little bit confusing is if we have probabilities that are sort of right on the border. You know, so what, what happens if we have a probability like that's like right in here, right? Is it highly unlikely or is it only somewhat unlikely? Okay, you know, again, these are just sort of like descriptors along the probability scale. But now let's bring percents in because as we've seen in Math 7, okay, every fraction also corresponds to a percent because all a percent is is a fraction out of 100, right? When I say 70%, I just mean the fraction 70 one hundredths, okay? Right, when I say 45%, I'm just talking about the fraction 45 one hundredths. So let's take a look at exercise two really quick. Above each of the five numbers on the probability scale, write the percent that corresponds to each fraction. Okay, simple enough. So above each one of these fractions, I'd like you to write the percent that goes along with that fraction. Pause the video now, these should all be very common percents. Well, zero is zero. There's no getting around that. So a fraction that is equal to zero corresponds to zero percent. 
One quarter is the same as 25 out of 100, so that's 25%. One half is the same as 50 out of 100, so that's 50%. Three quarters is 75 out of 100, so that's 75%. And the number one is equal to 100 out of 100, or 100%. All right? So we can think now about percents you know, or probabilities in terms of percent. So a probability of one-fourth or one out of four is the same as a probability of 25%. A probability of three out of four or three-fourths is the same as 75%. All right, and all of these kind of designations go right along with them. Okay, let's take a look at a problem where we look at probabilities given in terms of percents. Exercise number three. If an event has a probability of each of the following, then rate it as highly likely, highly unlikely, somewhat likely, somewhat unlikely, or neither likely nor unlikely. Okay, what I'd like you to do is look at each one of these. We don't need to do them all individually. Look at each one of them in turn and give them a rating based on that probability scale up above on your worksheet and the probabilities that are given here. There may be one that's a little bit on the border, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Pause the video now. Letter A, one of my favorites. The probability that the New York Knicks will win the playoffs in 2022 is 5%. All right. Well, I mean, think about that probability scale. I won't bring it back up there, but 5% is way down there. It's way towards the bottom. Okay, so that means that this is a highly unlikely event. I wish it was highly likely, but it is highly unlikely, even with the addition of Kemba Walker. New York Knicks fans will know what I'm talking about, even if this video is five years old. All right, letter B. The probability it is going to rain tomorrow is 80%. Well, that's pretty high, right? If you were planning a picnic or something like that, and you looked at your weather app and it said, Ah, the probability it's going to rain tomorrow is 80%, you'd probably say, well, maybe we should put that off. You know, it's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. There's still a 20% chance that it's not going to rain. But if, the, if it's going to rain, the probability of that is 80%. That's highly likely. Okay. Letter C. The probability that Elsa will make a free throw is 68%. Okay, well now that one starts to be a little bit of a border, right? But 68% is more likely than unlikely, so it's not going to be any of these unlikely ones, okay? And I believe that it's far enough above 50% that you could say that this is somewhat likely, right? That's somewhat likely. Okay. And finally, letter D. This is the one I think is that may be the most sort of vague. The probability that Jaden will sleep in is 40%. All right, 40%, right? It's close to 50%, but not quite. I think if you put either somewhat unlikely here or neither, you would be fine, okay? This one's really quite close. I would say that it's neither, but also somewhat unlikely, right? It's definitely less likely than likely, right? Any probability less than 50% means there's less of a chance that it's going to happen than it will happen, right? There's a 60% chance that Jaden will not sleep in, okay? But we're getting pretty close to the 50% here. We're almost like flipping a coin. Not quite, but it's pretty close. Okay, let's keep going. Here we go. Hey, what would be a probability lesson without a spinner, right? There just wouldn't be one. Let's take a look at exercise number four. A game board spinner is divided into eight equally sized sections as shown below. The pointer is spun once. Answer the following questions. Express your probabilities first as fractions out of eight and then as percentages. All right, well, these are gonna be pretty easy. Letter A. What is the probability the pointer lands on an even number? All right. Well, pretty simple, right? 
There are eight different places, eight total places that the spinner can point to. All equally likely. Remember, equally likely. Very important. Of those eight, four of them are even numbers. Two, four, six, and eight. So as a fraction, we would say the probability is four eighths. In fact, you'll hear a lot of math teachers even put that fraction up and say, oh, your probability is four out of eight. You know, like literally the fraction isn't even called four eighths, it's called four out of eight. Now, of course, we all know that four eighths is the same as one half, and one half is the same as 50 one hundredths, and so therefore, this is a probability of 50%. Right? A 50% probability that pointer is going to land on an even number. Let's take a look at letter B. What is the probability the pointer lands on a number less than 7? Okay, why don't you take a little bit of time and figure this one out for yourself. Alright, well, there are 8 numbers again, so that's going to be our denominator, and there are 6 of the numbers that are less than 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as a fraction out of 8, as the instructions tell us, we can say that the probability is 6 eighths. But we know that 6 eighths is the same as 3 fourths, 3 fourths is the same as 75 one hundredths, and therefore the probability that the pointer lands on a number less than 7 is 75%. Okay? And again, probabilities are given all the time in terms of percents because then people can really visualize them, right? 0% chance of something happening, not going to happen. 100% chance of something happening, it's going to happen, right? And then everything else just falls neatly in between those two. The probability scale. Okay, let's take a look at a bunch of these things where we work with probabilities in terms of percent. Exercise number five. In a gym class with 50 students, seven of them can do 10 pull-ups. If a student was picked at random, what is the probability that they can do 10 pull-ups? Express your answer first as a fraction and then as a percent. All right, why don't you go ahead and try to do this problem. Now you got to kind of watch out in this problem because there's three numbers floating around, 50, 10, and 7. All right, but what we know is that there are a total of 50 students. If I was going to close my eyes, right, and just point to one student, there would be 50 different possibilities I could point to. Of those 50, how many can do 10 pull-ups? Well, seven of them can. So the probability in terms of in terms of a fraction is not here. Wow, look at that. That was interesting. Talk about a time delay on the pen. Was scribble fiftieths. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, <laughs> 7 out of 50. Wow, that was very, very strange. Um, all right, so the probability based on a fraction is 7 fiftieths. Now, what is this as a percent? Well, anytime we have a denominator of 50, it makes it very easy to think about percents because we can just multiply both the bottom and the top of that fraction by 2, giving us the equivalent fraction 40 one hundredths or 14 one hundredths, which is equal to 14 percent. Uh, that was kind of a brutal problem to try to get to a very simple answer. So there's 14 percent chance that the person picked at random can do 10 pull-ups. I would not be one of those people. It's true. I've never been able to do pull-ups. Let's take a look at exercise number six. Hopefully my pen will continue to work. A basket has 40 apples in it. Of the 40, 18 have bruises. If an apple is picked at random, what is the probability it has a bruise? Express your answer as a percent. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you can get the right answer. Okay, this one is a little bit more challenging to do without a calculator. If you have a calculator, it's actually not that bad. And you'll definitely need a calculator for exercise 7 unless you want to do some seriously long division on it involving decimals, which I don't think you want to do. But exercise 6 we can still do without a calculator. It's very, very simple. The probability in terms of a fraction, we've got 18 apples that have bruises, 
right, out of 40 apples. So our probability in terms of a fraction is 18 40ths. Now, in terms of a percent, it's a little bit harder to make the 40 into a 100. But if we reduce this fraction by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2, we get 9 twentieths. Now it's easy enough to get a denominator of 100. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. So 18 40ths is the same as 45 one hundredths, and that gives me a probability of 45%. By the way, just think about this a little bit, right? The 18 is slightly less than half of the 40, right? Half of 40 would be 20. 18 is slightly less than that. And look, our probability then is slightly less than that mid probability of 50%, right? We're just down barely at 45%. Okay, last problem, exercise number seven. In a room full of 30 kids, five of them write with their left hand. If a kid is picked at random, what is the probability they write with their left hand? Express your answer as a percent rounded to the nearest whole percent. Fantastic. All right, why don't you go ahead and pause the video now. You're probably going to need your calculator on this one. All right, well, it's simple enough. Five out of the 30 kids write with their, their left hand, and therefore there's our fraction, right? So the probability is 5 thirtieths that they write with their left hand. Now, in terms of actually getting a probability out of this, the easiest way to do it is to simply take 5, divide it by 30 on our calculator, right? That gives us 0 0.16 repeated, okay? Now, if we rounded that to the nearest hundredth, it would be 0.17 which is the same as 17 one hundredths, which then is 17%. There's a probability of 17% that a student picked at random would be writing with their left hand. Let me go back to our full screen view, and let's do a little wrap up here. Now, a lot of times in the real world, you see probability bantered about. You know, you see it all the time. You might be watching an NBA basketball game and they might say something like Giannis Antetokounmpo, or however you pronounce his last name, sorry Giannis, um, shoots, you know, only about a probability of only making 60% on his free throws, right? You'll hear that kind of thing all the time. Percents used as probability, okay? And it makes all the sense in the world, right? We have a probability of 0%, impossible. A probability of 100%, guaranteed, all right? And then every other probability just falls in between. We've now worked with how to convert fractions to decimals to percents, so this should be a natural extension of that idea. All right, we'll work a lot more with probabilities in terms of percents in coming lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me with, for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.